2011 was a pretty eventful year for many reasons. A massive tsunami wiped out thousands of homes in Japan, the late Avicii rose to fame when he dropped his first banger with levels, and the last film in the Harry Potter series hit the cinema screen. However, it was also the year Codemasters had a little treat for his racing game fans in the form of Dirt 3, and it had a lot to live up to, especially after the huge success of its predecessors. Ever since the original Dirt was released way back in 2007, the franchise had been extremely popular, pulling in players that weren't necessarily rallying fans. The soundtracks in the first two games, as well as the user interfaces and the driving experience in general was the ultimate package that every racing fan could ever dream of in a game, and in my opinion Dirt 3 delivered that yet again. And it wasn't just the music that was selected perfectly, the developers had gone all out with an extensive list of cars to drive, ranging from the old stars of the 60s like the Mini and the Renault Alpine to the Group B monsters of the 80s, all the way up to the present day. Which leads me nicely onto the next thing I loved about the game. The addition of Jim Carner mode in my opinion was genius. Not only was it hellish fun sliding around Battersea Power Station for a bit of practice, it improved your skills behind the wheel probably more than you know. Yeah, hurtling down narrow rally stages will dial in your skills as well, but like I said before, this game was known for attracting people who never even had a slight interest in rallying, and the Jim Carner mode brought with it an entirely new wave of players to add to on top of those. Reason being that at the time of this game's release, every single video Ken Block uploaded was going mega viral. Everybody, myself included, wanted to recreate the seemingly impossible tricks from his videos, and the best way to do that was to fire up the PS3 or the Xbox 360, jump into the Fiesta, and floor it. Perfectly executed done drifting under and around trailers or jumping through container ships. No matter what challenge you set yourself, you felt a tremendous sense of achievement when you nailed it. And I can't really think of another driving game that I can compare that to as of yet. Maybe Forza Horizon, but I've got a PS4 so I've never actually played it. You can't make a dirt game though without the good old fashioned rally stages. And although there weren't too many to choose from, it never seemed to get repetitive, no matter how many hours you piled into the game, as you were constantly progressing onto quicker cars, so every bend, jump or flick of oversteer became a bit more of a challenge to manage. The predatory feeling of hunting down the guy who set off in front of you, and the elation you felt when you chomped another three seconds off the split time because he binned it into a tree was incredible. The Trailblazer events took this to the extreme. You could drive in cars with up to 900 brake horsepower with huge aero packages, and the sense of speed you felt when redlining the Z4 over the dusty Kenyan roads with boulders lining either side of the course was enough to get anyone's heart rate up, especially if you turned off flashbacks. One wrong move, and you're a goner. Rallycross was, and still is, growing at a rapid rate to this day. It brought in thousands of spectators back in the 90s in Britain, but it took the world by storm when the likes of Colin McRae, Travis Pastrana and Tanner Faust started competing in the sport over in the US of A to try and win the illustrious X Games Gold, and it proved to be a hugely successful game mode in Dirt 2. And from what I can remember, it didn't change all that much for Dirt 3. It didn't have to. Codemasters had nailed the formula with the earlier title. The track racing aspect of the game was so fun and probably one that typical rallying fans had never experienced before. Starting on a grid next to your competitors, racing for track position into the first corner, only to be wiped out from behind by someone who'd horrendously misjudged the braking zone, was enough to get your blood boiling. But if you survived the carnage of the first lap, it was some of the best bumper to bumper racing I've ever played, especially online. Now, there's always one event in any game you don't mind playing but you'd rather not. And just like Capture the Flag in Call of Duty, Land Rush was like that for me on Dirt. It was good fun every now and again, but after blasting through the Finnish forests in an RS200, the last thing I wanted to do was bound around a track in a stadium buggy. Great concept, but I think the lack of options in this mode let it down a bit. There were some pretty epic online game modes too. I know I kind of dis the flag a second ago, but Cat and Mouse was pretty much a car version of that. One player on each team pilots a Mini Cooper, and the other three drivers on your team drive more powerful cars. The team that gets their mini over the finish line first wins. Outbreak was another game mode that was essentially a game of tag. The more talented drivers could get into the harder to reach spots, leaving the less experienced players baffled as to how the hell they got up there. It didn't take long for the tutorials to hit YouTube, making it easy for anyone to figure it out how it was done, but you still needed some practice to access some of the glitchier spots. Anyway, I could talk about this game and the experience as I had on it all day, and it'd be great to hear what you thought of it down in the comments. Once I'm finished on Wreckfest, I might return to it and make a couple of gameplay videos for old time's sake. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop it a like, and if you want to see more content, you can subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, especially if you made it this far, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!